In this lesson, I want to show you something that's not new, but has been upgraded, if you will. So if you go up to the word edit on the pull down menu, you will find fill, the ubiquitous fill command. Fill's been there for a while, but it's been upgraded to something called scripted patterns. Now we've got two images. One begins with 683 and one begins with 609 in your exercise folder. They're both in Photospin. Let's start with this one. Kind of a pastoral scene, but I want more trees. Now I could pick up my paintbrush and start painting trees, I suppose, but not today. What we're going to do first is create a new layer. Just like that. Just click that button. There you go. Go up to the word edit on the pull down menu and go down to fill. Now, if this does not say pattern, change that to pattern. Because when you change to pattern, you get scripted patterns down here, and that's what we want. Don't worry about any of this right now. Change that to tree. Click OK. OK, we got a tree. Now let's start up here. If we click here, it's actually showing me the last thing I did. Let me start with that. Let me go ahead and go in here to default. Let's start you actually with an oak tree if you've never been here before. But if you come up here again, you will notice that if you like something that you've done, you've built your tree, you can save it and then use it over and over again. What we want is not an oak tree because I'm thinking pine trees in here. And also they're kind of scrawny. And the light source is coming from here because you can see the shadows on the ridges. So I've got some good information. Let me bring this back up. Change from an oak tree to a pine. Now look at all these trees. There's some I can't even pronounce. But there's the good old pine tree. First thing, let's change the angle of the sun. It's showing it to me right here by coming up here. Pull that wee over here, just like that. That looks pretty good. I don't want to tilt the camera, change the angle, but I do want to change the leaves. I want to make it a little bit more scrawny, if you will. So I'm going to come over here and pull it this way, say to about there, and let go. Yeah, something like that. Now you could change that around. You can even take all the leaves off it if you want to. Down here, we have a custom color. Now if you don't like that color, you can click here and actually change that. You can click here and change it to any color you want. Let me go ahead and get out of here and turn that back off. We can also change the custom color for the branches. We can introduce shading, noise on the leaves and the branches, randomize the shapes if you want to do that, and change the arrangement. I think I'm happy with what I have. So go ahead and click the OK button, or if you want to, you can go ahead and save it. It's up to you. Click OK. Now that's what I'm talking about. That's a tree, but it's a little bit bigger than what I want. So it's in a separate layer. Go up to the word Edit and go down to Free Transform. Why not? It's free. It doesn't cost anything. Go to a corner. Hold the Shift key down. That's to maintain proportion, of course. Put it to the size that you want it to be. Double click to set and put your tree where you want it. Let's do one more from this layer by holding down the Alt key, and that's the Alt key and Windows Option key on a Mac, and drag one over here. Go back up to the Word Edit and do a free transform. And that one should be a little bit smaller, so I'm going to hold the Shift key down again for proportion control. And maybe put that one right about there. Now we could keep this up and populate with more trees if we want to. One of the new features in Phil is the ability to make your own trees. That's pretty cool. We're not done. Delete these two layers real quick. I'm going to create another new layer, and I'm going to turn off the background. I want to show you another way you might use this. Come over here and pick up underneath this tool right here. You have what's called the Custom Shape Tool. Select that. Now up here, if I click, I've got a lot of shapes. Now I got them because I clicked here and said All. Now what I'm looking for is this one right here. So I've got the maple leaf selected. I want to make sure I've got pixels selected up here. I'm going to go into my swatches and choose a neutral gray color. Doesn't matter which one, just choose a neutral gray. And in the blank layer, I'm going to draw a maple leaf. Just like that. Now go ahead and pick up your rectangular marquee and draw a rectangle around that bad boy. Just like that. Go up to the word edit. We're going to make a pattern. Define pattern. Click OK. Now we don't really need this one anymore, so you can just delete it. Let me just click somewhere and get rid of that selection. OK, now go up to the word edit and go down to fill. Change this right here to random fill. 
and change the custom pattern to our maple leaf, it will be there. Click OK. Now, if we go back in and do the default, this is the last thing I did. You probably see something like this. What I'm going to do is change the density. I want more leaves. Minimum and maximum scaling factor. What's the smallest and what's the biggest on a random basis? Maybe not quite so big. We don't have this on a path, so it's going to fill a whole area. If we did, it would be on the path. I want it to rotate. Color randomness and brightness is where you're going to have some fun. Let's start kicking this thing up. So how many different colors in terms of random and how bright are they? Click OK. Now what have I just done here? Well, this could be a nice pattern or a backdrop for something, say, for example, like maybe a poster for fall or autumn. We can make our own patterns and do anything we want. Random fill. No, we're not done. Let's go to the next image right here. I've never seen a kitchen that clean that has two kids in it, but that's just another subject, I guess. I want to put a picture frame around this. Now, I've been doing framing around images in Adobe Photoshop for about 157 years, two months, and three days but not like this. Now we create a new layer for control. Always do that. Go up to the word edit and go down to fill. This time, no pattern. Come down here and select picture frame. Click OK. Just start having fun, actually. Now again, that's the last one I did. So I'm going back to default. And I did save one, too. You can save these, don't forget. Now, that's a happy vine, but I don't want a happy vine. If I click here, I can try something else. How about spring weed? Let's try that one. There we go. That's kind of interesting. Now, we can change the margin. Easy as that. We can change the size. I'm going to make those smaller. We can change the thickness. Actually, let's go back up here again and change the vine color. Let's give that a blue. Okay, now, down here, angle. Put them at wonky angles. Arrangement. Now, we have an invert right here, if you want to invert it. Actually, I like that. I'll leave that alone. The flower is portrayed as a small circle, but we can change that to something else, like maybe a rose. And let's give the rose a different color, like red. My love is like a red, red rose. Flower size. Now, some of the patterns that you get will have one more option down here. Ours doesn't. That's fine. Let's go ahead and click OK. All right. It's perfect for that image. Now, it is in its own layer, so we can control it if we want to. Some of the new options under Fill. We looked at just two or three of them. I want you to explore the other ones. Have some fun with this. A new feature that's an enhancement, actually, to an original feature called Fill. Check it out.